Magi Revo or Tenten Kakme as it's known in Japanese is one of the best representations of an LGBTQ relationship that we've seen recently in anime. The series deals with some pretty serious topics like sexual identity, sexism, and classism in a really mature way. While the main character Anis comes on to Yuffie rather strong in the beginning, their relationship develops in a really organic and healthy way over the course of the show. Even though I have my issues with the adaptation quality of the anime, I'm at least really happy that the time from world building that was cut out from the anime went to Yuffie and Anis's relationship. The studio removed a lot of the info dumps from the light novel, instead opting to focus on the main couple's relationship and the general themes of sexual and social rebellion and liberation which serve as the primary themes of the series. For a lot of members of the LGBTQ community, life before coming out can seem pretty suffocating. The pressure to fit in with established social norms is massive and almost debilitating at times. While most people can't relate to the feeling of having to lead a kingdom or be next in line for the throne like Anas and Yuffie, a lot of people have felt the pressure to be normal and conform to society society's ideal. I love how the series uses Anis and Yuffie's struggle for freedom from the predetermined roles given to them as an allegory for people accepting their own identities. We may not be in a fantasy story, but in real life we all just want to be ourselves and be loved for who we really are. Of course, in the show it's not just an allegory though, and that's another reason why I really love it. There's no Yuri Bay or just teasing the sale merch like in Liko Rico or other popular shows recently. This is a pure and proper Yuri relationship, and I really enjoy seeing Yuffie in particular realize how she feels about Anis. Yuffie lived her whole life cooped up, conforming to the idealized image that people have of her, and when we see Anas literally sweep her off her feet in that first episode, it's the start of a beautiful and satisfying journey that culminates in one of the most satisfying finales you'll see in a romance anime. If anything, the anime actually tones things down between them quite a bit, especially that amazing kiss scene we got in episode 13. That was way more intense and graphic in the light novel. Highly recommend checking that out, by the way. In addition to sexual liberation, the series also deals with sexism and classism in a really mature way. The kingdom that Anas is due to inherit has never had a female ruler, and that's compounded by the fact that Anas can't use magic either. There's several scenes in the show with Anas meeting with nobility that feel all too real and almost feel like they could happen in any office meeting in real life. Seeing a bunch of old men sit there and talk down on who, at that time anyway, was to be the next ruler of the kingdom purely because she's a woman was actually really uncomfortable, and I think the studio did a great job of conveying that feeling through the screen. You really get a sense of the antiquated views that these folks have and can't help but want to see Anas show them up, which of course she ends up doing at the end with Yuffie when she sets out to change the trajectory and the culture of the kingdom. While it wasn't a perfect adaptation and I do have some issues with it, particularly relating to the omission of characters and removal of some backstory, I still think Tenten Kakne is one of the best examples of Yuri anime and one of the best isekai in general out there. I think the best isekai are the shows that don't necessarily focus on the fact that they're isekai and instead actually focus on the character development of the main character, establishing lore in the world, backstory, world building, and Tenten Kakme did an amazing job of that. The studio's decision to focus on Anas and Yuffie's relationship creates two different experiences for those seeking to get into the franchise. You can enjoy the anime and then get a deeper understanding of how the world works and the lore from the light novels. This will no doubt go down as one of the best shows of winter 2023 and of the year as a whole, and I can't recommend checking it out enough. If you're looking for a fresh take on Isekai or a good well-written Yuri couple or just a good show to pass the time in general, this will definitely tick all of your boxes. And I also highly recommend checking out the light novel because like I said it was a totally different experience from the anime that we got and they're amazing some of the best world building in isekai right now and one of the best ongoing light novel series so I can't recommend that enough thanks for watching make sure you subscribe if you want more anime content if you enjoyed the video consider leaving a like as well it really helps the channel grow and I'll see y'all in the next one